right, today we're going to be talking about who I think is the best mutant in the entire game, Apocalypse. And I know what you're thinking. You're just barely ranked ring this guy, and my answer is yes. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why I like stalled on ranking him for so long, but I did it, and he is unbelievably overpowered. I think he is easily the best mutant in the game. And why do I think that? Well, I think that because his uh, like his value just uh, based off like the horseman thing is crazy like his horseman ability is absolutely unreal it just makes so many characters better and honestly that's one of the reasons i ranked him to be honest because like i would always use it for the horseman ability and i had to ramp him at rank one and i was like so sick and tired of that so i was like you know what i will just like rank this guy to rank three just to make my life a little bit easier but not only that, just like the fact that he also has access to some crazy utility, some unique utility, like he has pieces of utility that like no other characters have in the entire game, which is so crazy. And his damage output is phenomenal. Like in this Gauntlet and Doom matchup, he is just doing so well. I do have the Stripe Synergy, which is one of my favorite synergies in the entire game because it just makes him such a good damage dealer, like especially in these long matchups. And yeah i just think he is an incredible character his damage output is perfect his, his utility is perfect his value to your account is perfect i think he is just a perfect champion to be honest so like i said we're here in this doom matchup i also like how you can shut off doom's aura because um, of the concussion and we're also size xl so we ignore the glancing node like there's just a lot of small pieces of utility that apocalypse has that makes him good for so many different fights like this being a prime example right here and we're about to finish the fight off we, we seem to get to one more sp1 which we do quite soon and uh yeah that's gonna be a wrap for this one right after i actually throw the sp1 okay now i get the bar of power and now i throw it and then the matchup is just over also, may I point out, look at the time. The time was like 2.04 or something. Yeah, that's that's incredible. And here is like a prime example of like unique utility. This is the Gauntlet Modoc. He has Hard Knock Life. And I don't know if you don't know or not, but like he is immune to Disorient. And he is the only champion in this game that is naturally immune to Disorient. And that is just, like, absurd. Not only because, like, he's actually immune to it, but the fact that they haven't released any character after Apocalypse to make that's, like, immune to Disorient. That's wild that there is only one champion still immune to this effect. Like, I mean, there's, like, there's ways that champs get around it. Like, Longshot doesn't get his ability accuracy reduced, but he still gets his block proficiency reduced, so that kind of sucks. But, um... Yeah, there's like ways around it, obviously, but he is the only character to be like naturally immune to it, which is just incredible in my opinion. And this matchup just goes insanely well. There's stun vulnerability and we can just like use our first light attack into his block to stun him, which is incredible. That's also another piece of utility that's like amazing. You don't have to like parry, you can just get your own openings like that. So it's just really strong utility like that this guy has as a whole i've said that like 10 times so i'm gonna say it's 10 more in this video just because he does so much like he really just does so much as a champion um i am getting hill reverse on every time he throws an sp1 which is unfortunate like it's a race against the clock pretty much but we do end up soloing this fight and we do it in pretty good time as well This matchup is pretty much coming up to a close. We just need to do one SP1 after this one, and then we're just going to be smooth sailing. Um, my health got reversed a lot throughout this matchup, but that's just because I was running the recoil masteries, and he reverses healing on his SP1. But other than that, this is a pretty darn good matchup, I would say. Um, and yeah, that just finishes the matchup off. That was a pretty dang fast time as well, to be honest. Um, that was like two minutes as well. Yeah, 206, perfect. So now we're here in Act 7 in this Mutant Mastery lane. Uh, what this does is every time you inflict a debuff, you get a chance to get a prowess. And also there's endurance trial. So like 
you need four debuffs on the opponent to do damage. And there's also persistent pressure where like you need prowess to reduce the unsolvable duration. So there's a lot of things going on here, but APOC counters it really well because he has easy access to debuffs. And yeah, just a really easy time for him. We dropped the SP1 and it just does a ton of damage. Like, look at that. That was absolutely insane. And now I forget to put on the debuff, so I have to wait on Unstoppable, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, things are going pretty well so far in this matchup. I think I go for one more SP1 here, I think. Or not. Okay, I don't do that. Now I do it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And I hope it crits. Of course it doesn't crit, but <laughs> other than that, that was just a pretty smooth matchup overall. That was only like uh, 49 seconds, I believe. Yeah, perfect. This path doesn't necessarily show like his best utilities, but it does show the fact that he is just like a mutant champion who has really easy access to debuffs and really practical access to debuffs. Like the way he can just like heavy attack to get bleeds is amazing. The way he can just like do an SP1 to get debuffs is great as well. And also the fact that his SP1 debuffs are like permanent is amazing because like you really want permanent debuffs on this lane and I think it's just crazy how practical his debuffs are. Like, they just never fall off. Like, once you put them on, they are not coming off because like, you can just refresh them easily with the heavy attack. They last like a billion seconds. And yeah, it's just really, like, really awesome, really practical, and I love it. So, this matchup is pretty much the same thing um, a lot of damage. <laughs> And yeah, that was, also, that was also like 49 seconds, I believe. What are the odds of that? Okay, I think this fight covers pretty much like every important piece of Apocalypse Utility. This is um, Hard Knock Life, and it also is Ebb and Flow Intercept. So what that is, is that every time we intercept, we get a Fury buff. But once that Fury buff expires, he purifies all debuffs. But he can't purify with Apocalypse because that's Apocalypse's like main ability. And also there's Hard Knock Life which Apocalypse straight up ignores because he's immune to Disorient. So like, it's just a really good time. It is a really, really good time for Apocalypse. There's also this immediate note that gives you a Fury every time you have a Bleed debuff, which Apocalypse does have access to Bleed. So like, this is just a perfect matchup for Apocalypse pretty much. And the damage output is just like absurd. Um, it's really, really strong. We go for an SV2 here and yeah it is just unreal like so much damage coming from apocalypse that was a pretty good time as well i think it was like uh yeah 47 seconds back on the same lane um we're just gonna do the same thing we did last time <laughs> like apocalypse is insane for this lane like this lane was made for him he counters every single aspect of it you know he gets the benefit from the mutant node he counters the disorian because he's just straight up immune to it um, he counters the note I'm forgetting, like, that's also in it. Oh, yeah, Evan Flo Intercept, he counters that as well because, like, he doesn't get his debuffs purified. Uh, there's just, like, a ton going on in this matchup, but he just counters everything in it. So it's perfect. It's, like, really perfect. And that just pretty much sums up Apocalypse. Like, he just counters everything he is designed for. I don't know why I went for an SP1 here. I, I just, I don't know what I was thinking, but... You know, it's fine. Um, we're going to finish the matchup anyway, so it's it's no big deal. And uh, yeah, we just dropped one more SP1, I believe. I do it when we have the protection up, like just because it's going to do enough damage anyway. And yeah, that was a bit longer than the last matchup, but that was still a really efficient matchup. That was like 55 seconds. All right, now it's time for Apocalypse to go crazy on this node. Um, this is a node where like... A mutant attacker triggers regen on their special attacks and every time they do that they also get a fury uh, a passive fury and apocalypse has a ton of <laughs> like hits on his special attacks so he's gonna get a lot of furies from it and you're just gonna see how crazy it is also i forgot to point out that like we're running a full mutant team because apocalypse has a synergy where for every mutant on the team you get plus 15 percent attack so plus 60 percent attack for a full mutant team is absolutely crazy and there's like a ton of like phenomenal mutants in the game, which I am running in the team. So like, it just makes sense to run it if you're like playing with Apocalypse. But yeah, absolutely crazy fight. That was like 30 seconds, I believe, which is an, a crazy good time. 
So we're here on the same lane. I just wanted I just wanted to do it one more time because it was so fun to do the first time. Like this node is so fun for apocalypse. My health dropped a lot because I fought a void and I don't know if you know the interaction with void if you have the recoil masteries, but it's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. So that's why my health is looking a bit down. Um and that's why my cable was dead as well. <laughs> I totally died with them. But anyways, um yeah, Apocalypse is just really good for that. I don't know what happened there. Um, I guess, like, I yeah, I really don't know what happened there, but it doesn't matter because that was just so much damage output, and that was only, like, 31 seconds as well. So not only is Apocalypse immune to Disorient, he's also immune to Bleed and Incinerate, which is phenomenal. And in this lane, I'm going to showcase the Bleed immunity. So you can trigger the Bleed immunity by, like, getting a biohazard bleed on you or just by like using the recoil mastery bleed on you but either one works and it's just like phenomenal that he like once you get the first bleed out of the way you're immune to it for the entire quest which is great you know that's like perfect and this fight just goes really really well you don't want to hit his block because he, apocalypse is not immune to poison so that would just be a really bad time but yeah all in all this is like a really smooth matchup like, whenever he has class advantage, he just, like, he pops off, man. It's so good. Um, and, yeah, we just dropped the SP2 here. And it's absolute overkill, but that was still just crazy. Like, those 25k crits is insane. That was, like, 40 seconds as well. And if I remember correctly, this fight doesn't go as well, but it's still, we still pull through. Um, this is same lane, but it's a long shot instead of a Ronin. And the long shot is a pretty scary defender if you like get clipped by his SP1. But we are bleed immune anyway, so we wouldn't take damage from it, so it's all good there. Um I didn't realize that though, so I was playing really cautiously. But now we dropped the first SP1. Um I don't know why the damage like felt less than before, probably because of the class advantage thing, but it doesn't really matter anyway. Um he's in pure fire, so you don't want to let him throw the SP2. But if Longshot were to throw the SP2, we would just, like, get immunity to incinerate after, like, 8 seconds, but I think we would be dead beforehand, so, you know, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, yeah, this fight just took, like, longer than the Ronin one, is, like, what I meant by, like, it didn't go as well, but it still did go pretty well overall. Um, you actually can inflict the concussion on, on Longshot, but he just doesn't get, like, any effect from it. And yeah, this fight's pretty much like over. We should have built to one more SP1. And we need to take a heavy as well, apparently. I forgot about that. Um, gosh darn it. I forgot I took a heavy. But um, yeah, that was a pretty smooth matchup besides that one heavy attack. And that was a pretty good time as well. And to round off this video, I just wanted to do this quick fight because Apocalypse is also stun immune whenever he's attacking. So that's really good for like encroaching stun, you know, nodes like that and this fight just goes so well like it is unreal how fast he did this fight um yeah we just get our special attacks up i don't know why i'm playing so passive here and i don't even know if i showcase the stun immunity part i think i do actually i go in like right here and see it says immune so we don't even have to worry about the encroaching stun and then i throw the sp1 one more time and it just does so much damage like that was absolutely unreal. That was like 20 something seconds, 31 seconds. So let me know your thoughts on Apocalypse. Uh, for me personally, I think he is just unreal. Like the damage output, the utility, the synergies, the horseman ability is just all absolutely perfect. And everyone probably knew that, but I just had to say it myself, um, that I think he is the best mutant in the game. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on Apocalypse and that's gonna be it for me.